Welcome to Valve Design and Testing. My name is David Waltzman and I'm a Simulation Division Manager with Go Engineer. Today we're going to be looking at our SolidWorks Flow Simulation product and its application to Valve Design and Testing. The reason why we'd want to be doing simulations is to figure out valve coefficients. Sometimes we're provided the coefficients by the manufacturer and we're more interested in flow rates or the opposite. So for those of you that aren't as intimate with this topic on a daily basis, here is the equation regarding valve coefficients and flow rates. So we have Q equals CV square root of delta P over G, where Q is the capacity in gallons per minute. So these are your flow rates. For those of you working in SI, this might be meters cubed per second. Or in the HVAC industry, you might be looking at CFM, right, cubic feet per minute. We have our valve coefficient, which is dimensionless, right? And it's going to vary widely depending on the industry and the types of fluids being used and, and whatnot. Delta P will be the pressure differential across the system. So sometimes, again, this will be your input. Sometimes this will be what you're looking for with a defined GPM. And then we have our specific gravity of the fluid. Altogether, you do a recombination of that formula and get the valve coefficient equation at the bottom. So manipulating that for the various parameters, here's all the different ways that you can solve it. Again, in engineering, we always wanna take what we have to get what we need. I mentioned specific gravity before. Some of you may not be as familiar with that term. Essentially, water has a specific gravity of one. And what you're looking at in all these different tables here are other fluids with these fractional numbers. So any value less than one means that it's lighter than water, it's less dense. And anything greater than one would mean it would sink. So for example, if you look at oil here as a value of 0.91, that makes logical sense. because if you know if you pour water in oil, the oil floats on the surface, right? Like when we have fires out at sea. So an analytical approach to sizing a valve could be as simple as you have a, a flow rate that you're looking at, and you know that the pressure is coming in and going out, and you need to select a valve. All right, so here's an example case in the biotech realm. And so using our simple equations here, we're taking in a spec for a coefficient from the manufacturer and running through all that to see the flow rate that we need to satisfy these conditions. So again, this is a real simple equation to manipulate to get what we need. All right, so while the analytical results are fantastic and a really quick way to figure things out, we know that in the real world, things aren't perfect, and many times the application can change the performance of a product. So we're going to be looking at here as a globe valve with uh, pressures at the inlet and outlet and defining our performance coefficients and how that all fits together in the real world. We make this more accessible to a general designer and engineer by incorporating computational fluid dynamic capabilities into the SOLIDWORKS CAD interface. Combined with that, we have some excellent visualization that you can see after the simulations ran. We could take 2D slices, 3D flow trajectories, and gather quite a bit of information that would be difficult, if not impossible, to do with physical testing. We can investigate what-if scenarios. So this is really powerful because instead of the cost of building multiple prototypes and all the time that it takes sending off to be machined or manufactured and come back. We can now investigate all these different options before lunchtime. Optimization is another critical factor. So this builds on those what if scenarios. So now we have a general idea of our performance characteristic and now we can hone in on one target and let SOLIDWORKS vary parameters until it achieves that target. Again, saving a lot of time over your traditional process. So let's get started. For our boundary conditions, we're going to say that we have water flowing through the system. Most of you out there are going to be using water as your fluid. And the pressure at the inlet will be two bar, and at the outlet will be one bar. So traditionally, we might think of inlets and outlets as flow rates or velocities, but we can still think of them as pressures because what's going to drive the flow here is the pressure differential. So from the pressure-driven flow, we want to extract what the flow rate is. We're also curious for this valve seat in the middle here, what the force is on that. And then using all this data, we want to look at the valve coefficient per those analytical equations that we showed in the beginning. An objective, as we go towards the end, is going to come up with a design that minimizes the valve seed force. Setting up an analysis in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is really easy. And I don't say that just because I do it every day, 
but because I'm able to take advantage of this wizard. So this first screen we're looking at on the left is really the meat and potatoes of the simulation. Here we're choosing an internal analysis because we have a watertight volume that we're looking at. There's also some small cavities inside of the valve system that we're not going to be analyzing the flow of. So we'll exclude those to make our calculation simpler. Again, we always want to try to make uh, our model as effective as possible, but also one that doesn't take several days or a week to run. We want to know how can we make a more intelligent design by the end of the day. The rest of the options here aren't too relevant for us in this scenario because we don't have any thermal considerations. Moving on from there, we're going to choose water as our fluid. In flow simulation, we're able to have multiple liquids and see how they move through the system. But many times, it's really just one that we're looking at. All right, so here's again another cross section of our system. As it's working through the valve area, there's going to be some turbulence that forms, and that's all right. Um, I don't have my PhD in computational fluid dynamics, but again, luckily I don't need to because SOLIDWORKS flow simulation adopts the K-epsilon model for a transition to turbulence. So as we go from laminar flow on the inlet to turbulence back to laminar, it's able to do all the calculations and mathematics for us. All right, so back to those boundary conditions. We created a watertight volume here so that we could define the pressures at the inlet and the outlet. So all we simply do is select those faces and define the pressure that's present. Once the simulation has ran, we usually have desired outputs, right? And the way we achieve convergence on those outputs is to set them as goals going into the simulation. So some of these are flow characteristics like velocity, density, our pressures. But we have several quantities here that aren't just output from the simulation, like our valve coefficient. So what we're able to do is enter in that equation that we looked at in the beginning of this presentation into flow simulation and see what the results are without having to export our generic data into Excel and manipulate it further. So again, as far as productivity goes, we're integrating everything inside of SOLIDWORKS to give us the results that we're looking for. From that point, we're ready to run our simulation. Solving in flow simulation takes advantage of all the processors on your computer. This is great because you don't have to pay uh, different amounts depending on what your computer is. Whether you have two cores or 12 cores, SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation is going to use all of them, maxed out 100%, no problem. But if you still need to do some other work while this is solving, you're able to dial back the number of CPUs and run it uh, a little slower on your computer, but it won't shut everything down so you can still multitask. So solving is multi-threaded. The meshing is also multi-threaded in Flow Simulation. Like I mentioned, it should be able to tap out all of your processors. And as far as you know, the question, how long does it take to solve? This scenario took me about 10 minutes to solve on my uh, mobile workstation. All right, so we saw how to set it up. Now let's look at some of the visualization that you get afterwards. Here we see cut plot, right? So this is taking a 2D slice through our model and we can map out temperature, pressure, velocity, any flow characteristic. And we can even model the streamlines in here as well. We can also take surface plot, right? So we have a simple click to take all the fluid interfaces and map out what their values are. We can also choose to look at flow trajectories. This is my personal favorite to look at. So we can now see this laminar flow coming in and all the mixing in the center section and how it starts to stabilize again as it exits. Again, to accomplish this empirically, would be quite difficult. From there, we're able to export charts and see how in time, while the simulation is solving, how the values stabilize. All right, so now to investigate those what-if scenarios. So, so far, we've looked at the valve being fully open. So what if we change the inlet pressure from two bar to five bar? And let's look at the increments in between as well. And what if the fluid temperature rose? How would that affect the performance of our part? All right, so remember, when you're reading those valve spec sheets, it's for a specific temperature. And we'd also want to look at what if the valve's fully open? What if it's half open or a quarter open? How does this all affect the performance? All right, so here's the full open. And then we see, as it steps down, how that's going to start to choke our flow. Our optimization in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is called the parametric study. Like I mentioned, we have two different ways to do it. The first one we're looking at is the what if scenario. So we'll be looking at the total pressure and uh, temperature. So this is our inlet condition and 
we're varying it by discrete values. Same thing with the temperature. And then for our outputs, I want to track our seat force, our valve coefficient, and our flow rates. So after doing that, I just hit run, and we're able to see how SolidWorks chugs through and delivers all the data for us. So once it's all done, we see this output in the program, and then we can export to Excel and do whatever further data manipulation that we like. We can even, as we're batch running these scenarios, choose if we want to split up our computational resources or keep them uh, strictly a serial process. So this is the interesting data here. If the trend isn't immediately obvious, let's look back to see what our design points are. So we start off with a low pressure and room temperature. The second point here is the same pressure but a higher temperature. So we see that as the temperature increases of the fluid, the valve coefficient increases as well. But then we see it drop again. Design point five, the pressure's gone up but it's back to room temperature. So we can draw another correlation out of here because at the same temperature, the increase in pressure increased the valve coefficient. Right, so we see how this trend keeps building. So now let's look at a specific target. So this would be a design parameter that's a make or break for the product. And the goal of this is to come up with a valve seat position that ensures a force of 500 Newtons right here. So this is where the max stress is going to be, right? The flow is coming through, trying to get out there. So in this scenario, we're going to be varying a model dimension. This could also be a flow parameter, but here this is a physical geometry alteration. Now this tolerance here is, uh, is being practical, right? As engineers, we're fairly pragmatic people. So I'm willing to accept a value anywhere between 490 and 510. So as far as setting that up, I'm just simply grabbing my model dimension from my CAD model and then choosing a range that would be acceptable for the position. From there, we enter in that target with the tolerance. This is all we need to do from the user side. And then we hit run and let SolidWorks cook. So you can see what it does is it started off at the maximum and then to the minimum, and then it cut somewhere in between, right? So we saw it went from 154 to low, to 818, too high, cut somewhere in the middle as an educated guess, ended up with 338, that's too low, so it kept modifying it until it converged on those results. So by design point eight, we reached 495, which is within that 10 Newton tolerance. So SolidWorks finished at this point, and now we can save out a new configuration or flow simulation project with this improved design. So again, looking at the valve force, and how that varied in these different design scenarios. See how it bounced around, came really close, just lowered another notch, and arrived. All right, so we saw how easy it was in SolidWorks Flow Simulation to set up an analysis. We saw the advanced visualization capabilities with cut plots, surface plots, and flow trajectories. Then we investigated multiple design scenarios for various temperatures and pressures and saw their impact on the valve coefficient, and then finished off with the design optimization, looking for the optimal position to achieve our 500 Newton force. This is David Waltzman with GoEngineer. Thank you for tuning in today.